Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We're back for another In the Hunt episode. We are in Osaka, Japan, and we're at the Super Potato located in Namba. Now, this store, very, very impressive, as you will see. In fact, we're going to have two episodes uh, just because there's so much to see. We just saw Snake there wearing uh, the, the face mask and a little bit roughed up, but still very cool to see as we're uh, just checking out the, the storefront here. And yeah, this, this location, very impressive and uh, definitely one to, uh, if you find yourself in this area, definitely one to visit. But let's go ahead and go inside and right away we're going to see like this little UFO catcher that they have set up with a, with a variety of uh, Nintendo handheld carts. And it's about 100 yen to play. I didn't, I didn't try just because I was so busy with filming, but next to that we have plushies and all look at all these snacks now these snacks are also kind of uh what you would find at the location in um akihabara in tokyo and then we have these little wet wipes i haven't seen these before but they're kind of cool especially if you want to uh keep the uh the gaming vibes for your uh, personal gaming rooms and whatnot but look here we're looking into the store up above we have mario hanging out and that's the cool thing about this place if you look up there's all sorts of decor but here are a few consoles and then we have our first display case just right at the entrance and this thing is loaded but it's not loaded with their best stuff it just has a bunch of stuff it's just amazing how much that uh, this location has and as you look here um, some of these games can be quite pricey as a matter of fact but that's 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 just the the price of you know low hanging fruit you know it makes it really convenient in fact for me when i was uh here in this uh osaka look at all these games but when i was in osaka it was kind of hard to um what you might call it you know do game shopping while doing uh the whole vacation thing so definitely uh grateful that i was able to share a lot of the the cool stuff that they have at this location and that's just one of the things you know convenience i guess and yeah just just amazing now i did I, I spent quite a bit of money here too just because you know convenience that low-hanging fruit we got a superboy there i believe uh, that's what that little handheld is and look at that x-men tiger handheld my goodness and then look pc engine now this thing is loaded they got the gt which is uh the turbo express like the little portable one in there look at that kirby with the little i like i like the whole decor thing that they have set up and then not only that, we have this commemorative Dreamcast. I've never seen this thing elsewhere, but again, I'm not no expert in the uh, rarity of uh, Dreamcast variations. And then a signed copy of, I believe that was Yakuza and uh, other a few uh, memorable things. And then look at this globe. This thing is freaking cool. Anyhow, we're going to take a brief walk here to the, to the other end so you guys can get a, a sense of the, the size of this shop. And just forgive the, the shakiness here. I wasn't able to bring in uh, or bring my gimbal while on vacation. But nonetheless, just so much stuff. And, and we're going to have a, a look at a lot of it. But we're going to start here at the PC Engine uh, Showcase. And I'll kind of zoom out here so you can get a, a closer view. They also have X360 titles on the top shelf and then MSX uh, on the bottom, I believe. And a few other uh, hardcore retro consoles down below. Not sure what this is, but it kind of reminds me of cotton there. Coming in at 21,780. Wow. And look at that little fox on that MSX game. And then there's actually two Castlevania games there for the MSX. That's freaking awesome. I recently saw one in Oyama, but these are a lot more, uh, they look to be in a lot better condition. And then we have the PC FX. The successor to the PC Engine, although this was a bit of a, I guess a bit of a failure and kind of a funky looking console as it looks like a, like a PC, like a little PC tower. And then down below, look at these little chunky cartridges. I don't know if that, or maybe those are the boxes. I'm not sure what system this is for, but that's pretty retro. Super retro as a matter of fact. And then one game that I do want to point out here is going to be Mappy. Now, when it comes to the early, earlier stuff, uh, you know, Mappy is definitely one of my uh, preferred titles. And it's kind of like a Pac-Man game, but it's a lot of fun. Really simple, but still fun to this day. And then we're going to head up to the Super City Rom Rom. We have a Dragon's Lair there for 3278. 
didn't even realize that. I would have picked that up if... Uh, actually, that was, that's for the 3DO, that Dragon's Lair. But still, nonetheless, I would have picked that up if I had been paying better attention. And then feel free to pause, you know, because there's just so much to, to, to digest here. And what do we have? Winds of Thunder. We have Kazakiri for 19-0-3-0. Not sure why I'm saying the numbers like that, but anyhow, let's... Uh, Let's keep it moving. Now, here in the back, we have Dracula X for 26730. Now, man, I've been looking for that game for quite some time, and I ended up picking that up just because of the condition it was in. Beautiful condition, as a matter of fact. And, you know, when you're buying these kinds of games at a high price, uh, sometimes the you do want to get the best condition that you could, uh, that you could find. Crazy how uh, I don't think that game is ever going to drop in price, at least not anytime soon. And then we have like the PC Engine Hue cards. And then look at this, this little screen that attaches to the core graphics. Freaking amazing. Uh, P uh, NEC was really ahead of the game when it came to like these uh, add-ons and peripherals. I always thought it was Sega, but really I think it was these guys. And I think out of, out of the PC Engine, one game that I, I definitely would like is Ninja Spirit. I think that's going to be the next thing on my hit list for, for this uh, platform. But all sorts of stuff, you know, more stuff than than I I know what it, what it is, you know. But here we have uh, 360, and then we have the Cave uh, Shooting Collection there for 87,780 yen. And more 360 titles. I don't know if some of these deserve to be in the showcase. Maybe it's just to kind of uh, fill it in. And then in the showcase next to that, we have hardware. But above that, look at all these game and watch style portable little uh, handhelds. As well as some other stuff. I don't even know what some of this stuff is, but it's just loaded. I think I, at this location, I was here for like four hours. Just at this location alone. Then we have a, an Avenue Pad 3, an Avenue Pad 6. In the back, there was one uh, in the box for about 7,000, almost 8,000 yen. And then here we have some loose hue cards. Look at that. We have Ninja Gaiden, Splatterhouse, Superstar Soldier, Jackie Chan, Gunhead. And then we have, what is this? Uh, Chomakaimura, uh, su uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, or Ghouls and Ghosts. What else do we have here? Oh, we have Ninja Spear. That's the game that I'm looking for. Although I want it complete. And then it's it's always awesome to see how they kind of like uh, merchandise things. Look at all these hue cards just kind of hanging out. I don't actually have any loose hue cards at the for, you know uh, at this time, but that might be something I consider to save a little bit of money. And then just all the box stuff. And you know you can spend hours in these aisles. Just kind of browsing for your platform of choice. Now let's go ahead and check out some 3DO. Look at this. We have the FZ1, the Gold Star, and then uh, I believe it's the FZ10. Uh, so we have the three big variants there. One by Sanyo. Actually, no, the Gold Star is missing. That was the Sanyo one. So there is one missing. And then here we have some games up above that. The 3DO, definitely an acquired taste, but for me it was worth it for that D's Diner, D's Diner Director's Cut, and uh, Super Street Fighter 2. Definitely worth it. And I do, I still want that uh, Madden NFL. And then we have the OG Xbox. Now they didn't have a lot, but at the next location that we visit, they had quite a bit more. And then above that we have 360 titles. It's crazy, you know, how, you know, the the Xbox platform just hasn't really taken off in Japan. But look, we have the DVD remote, S-Video cables, and then this power stick for the MSX. Kind of a funky looking one. By Panasonic, no less. And then we have the loose carts for the MSX. That's a platform that I probably will not collect for. Uh, just, it, just because space is an issue and, you know, the nostalgia bug hasn't hit me for it. And then here, let's let's make our way into soundtracks. We got to cover some soundtracks every now and then because they do have some interesting ones like this. We have Dancing Dad, Earthbound Papas for 3,278. I have no clue what that is. We have Donkey Kong Country for 48,180. Uh, and if you think that's expensive, that's nothing. 
compared to F0. Look at this coming in at almost a grand. My goodness. And then we have Fatal Frame 2, the premium fan disc. Next to, what is that, Me Metabot? And then a Half Minute Hero. That Metabot was like 90,000 yen. It's crazy how these things are, uh, how they're so valuable, you know? We have some, I believe these are tapes, which is freaking awesome to see. And then here's like a newer release. But 4,928 yen, I don't know. And then here we just have like the stacks. All sorts of cool uh, gaming soundtracks here. Not gonna lie, I was kind of tempted to get a, a few of these, but you know, spacing with this thing. Actually, this is not a bad price for this Panzer Dragoon. 2,090 uh, yen. And then we have the Hue card. Uh, looks like this is like the PC Engine arranged tracks by Taito. We got the Mega Drive 25th anniversary album. And then what is this? I don't know, but that cover is freaking awesome. Very busy cover, which is cool. And then we have the Shinobi Music Collection, The Legend of Joe Musashi. And look at this, even the 32X has its own uh, music, 15-year uh, music collection. Then we have a couple, or a few, uh, a couple of Sonic soundtracks. That Sonic Rush one was cool. And then Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, now that has the Super Famicom and Mega Drive soundtracks. And then we're going to make our way into the guides. Oh man, some of these guides have some wicked cover art like freaking awesome but you know some of them command like a hefty price tag i only have one for the original maikai mura but look at this metroid one look at that art that's a freaking poster and then we have a couple of castlevania ones and look at there for uh simon's quest holding the cross i don't think you would see that here or in the states here i'm in japan but <laughs> uh, i forget where i'm at sometimes but what do we have here up top? We have Street Fighter 2, more Metroid, Earthbound. Uh, looks like Mario Bros. 3. Kind of interesting little guides. But here, you know, like I was just kind of casually looking at it and it was it was easily like, I don't know, like 30 minutes. And some of these guides are, are newer, you know, they just keep pumping them out. But look at this. Just so much to browse. And next to that, we have some retro hardware. But we're going to look at the showcase for Famicom and Super Famicom. Look at that. This case alone could be like two or three episodes. Each shelf could be an episode. But we're going to have to get the abridged version, something condensed. Because it's just so much to take in. Now, the thing that pops out to me right away is Hagane. Look at that. 32,780 yen for the Super Famicom. That's pretty rare in the States and a lot more expensive. What do we have? Pocky and Rocky, Captain Commando, and Cool Spot, the old 7-Up uh, uh, Soda Pop uh, mascot. And then we have Blackthorn. That's an awesome game. I'm not sure what that racing game by Kemco. I'm not sure what that is, but at 19,000 yen, my goodness. What do we have? Marvel Super Heroes War of the Gems. For 31,680 yen, we have Wild Guns. It's a freaking awesome uh, game, and it's remake remaster is currently on Switch and the PlayStation 4, and maybe Steam and Xbox. Then we have some loose Famicom cards. My goodness, Snow Bros. Look at that, forty-three thousand seven hundred and eighty yen, and that's just the current state of retro. And what do we have? Uh, RoboCop Two. That's a cool cover. And then we have Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair on the Famicom. I wonder if that's any good. Now, in the back there, we have Sonic Blast Man 2 for 40,480 yen. The original Bla Sonic Blast Man is uh, freaking awesome. I love that game back uh, when I was growing up. And then we have Zool. I used to have that. The North American release. It was a so-so game. And we have some more Battletoads. What else do we got up in here? Famicom, you know. Look at this. This is this is uh, beyond my knowledge as it's uh, I do have a, a machine. But look at this over a grand for the the cart version of Castlevania, which I believe was released later in its life as the first uh, release was on the disc system. 
which we will also take a look at. We have the Turtles game there for 73,480 yen. And then this is like a small case of loose cards. Look at that, we have Zool in there. Uh, Spider-Man Lethal Foes, that's pretty rare, uh, Japanese only release. And then, Carts for Days. Look at all these. Man, oh man. Got some Kirby games. Earthworm Jim. I actually want to get that. The Genesis version is better, but I'll be good with the Super Nintendo one. We have what? What do we have here? The Flintstones. That was an awesome game. That is an awesome game. We have Doom. Freaking amazing that Doom is on on the Super Nintendo. What do we? And then Wolfenstein 3D, which I believe may be a better port than Doom. And we have the Legend of the Mystical Ninja, Goemon. And then the boxed games. I mean, look at this, guys. You could literally spend the whole day here. I probably wouldn't recommend that as there's more game stores. But still. We got the Dragon Ball Z titles. I wonder if those are any good. And more Goemon. What else do we have here? Uh, I think there's a standout one here. Yep. The Illusion of Gaia. I think it's uh, so under the Soul Blader name. That game is freaking awesome. Excellent action RPG. And then just stacks. And then here we have an end cap of Famicom games. I totally forgot to film the Famicom aisle, but I did not forget about the disc system. So we're going to focus on this one. And there's quite a bit here, as you can see. Oh man, the disc system. I only had one game. Uh, I had uh, uh, The Legend of Zelda. But I ended up uh, selling that off as I don't have a disc system to play it on. I believe that was The Lost Levels. As it's known in North America. Not sure what that is, but... Could be some kind of golf game. Judging by the cover. And then these Disk System games are in uh, a showcase here. We have uh, Simon's Quest 2, or Castlevania 2. And then we have like a Goku uh, Dragon Ball looking uh, game there. What do we have? Metroid there. We have uh, The Legend of Zelda 2 and then Kid Icarus. More Lost Levels and uh, the original Super Mario Bros. Well, the original was a little battle game, but y'all know what I mean. And what else do we have here? Look, it's just so much stuff. And like for me, honestly, like uh, the disc system, it's not something I'm going to be collecting for. But perhaps some of you out there are, are collecting for this uh, platform. And look, and look at the I don't even know what those PC games in the back are. They're not cheap, I'll tell you that. And then we have some generic disc system games that, because I believe these were rewritable and there was a kiosk where you could, uh, you know, uh, overwrite and get a new game. We got some twin Famicoms back there. And then we have the light gun. Look at this. In, a, in North America, it was the zapper, but here it looks like a straight up uh, pistol, a six, a six shooter, a revolver. Kind of, kind of neat looking, and here's a uh, one without the box. But we're gonna make, uh, and then I guess in the top shelf we had, uh, they had a N64. There we have the RAM expansion, and then a few uh, loose carts as well as box ones. We have Biohazard 2, Sin and Punishment, Super Star, Star Soldier 007, and Gauntlet Legends. And then in the back, look at that. Sin and Punishment and RE2 in the box. We have Beetle Racing Adventure. <laughs> Beetle Racing Adventure, excuse me. And look at this. We have some consoles and controllers. So many controllers. Although the controllers, I recommend getting those at a hard off in the junk section. Usually you could find one with the, with the joystick intact. And just so many, so many games. Look at this. And they probably have more in the back. I love seeing all this. 
I really do. I actually picked up, uh, what did I get for the N64? I got Hexen, and then I got Doom 64. I'm telling you. It's just so much, uh, so much to take in. What do we have here? Uh, Donkey Kong 64 in the box. And then a few titles here. And this is where I got my Hexen and Doom 64. Freaking awesome games. But guys, there is going to be more to come. In the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at the hardware. As well as a few other heavy hitting systems like the Neo Geo, Game Boy, Sega Dreamcast, Saturn, Genesis, and PlayStation 1. Anyhow, my name is JJ. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.